court dismisses Jordan's misconduct case, state surveillance system to expound, and activist completes cross-country march. I am Rico Bullfog, and this is Uncut News. You see news happening? Send us a tip on WhatsApp at 592-659-615. Former Finance Minister Winston Jordan had a misconduct case against him dismissed at the Georgia Magistrates Court today. The case was filed by Soku, alleging that Jordan had misconducted himself in public office when he signed a transfer of property order for government lands that had been sold to the BK Construction Company owned by Brian Tuari a transaction that actually began under the Ramadan administration. Jordan has maintained his innocence and accused the current government of filing a trumped-up charge to silence his criticism of the government's handling of the economy. Today, Guyana inaugurated its embassy in Qatar, with the president expressing hope for an enhanced bilateral relationship. The event was attended by Qatar's Minister of State and Foreign Affairs and ambassadors of other nations in the Gulf state. Qatar and Guyana established diplomatic relations back in 1996, with Georgetown seeking to strengthen cooperation in fields such as climate change and energy, among others. The nation's Safe Country Program is establishing CCTV surveillance camera systems infrastructure in Regions 3 and 6, with the ultimate aim of establishing systems in all 10 administrative regions. The program is an extension of the Safe City Initiative, which began under the previous administration, and will aid in real-time crime fighting and traffic monitoring, allowing for more efficient response to situations and resource deployment, supposedly. The National Data Management Authority is setting up the system in collaboration with the Ghana Police Force, which will run the command center where the cameras will be monitored in Turkey. East Bank of Demerara Public Road will be transformed into a four-lane fully lit thoroughfare to the Chetty Jagan International Airport, with tenders for the project supervision open and design and build aspect to be closed in July of this year. Three Chinese and Brazilian companies have been pre-qualified to bid for the project. No Guyanese so far. Now for crime. The police are currently investigating the death of 60-year-old Cecilia Ramsuk, from Quarantine Babies, whose decomposing body was found earlier today. She was last seen alive on the 9th of May at a wake house in Mibikuri. The woman's daughter reported that she lived alone and had a history of hypertension. The body was taken to the Ramaho funeral home for a post-mortem examination and the police investigations are ongoing. A family in Bell Western Region 3 was robbed by three masked men one of whom had been living with them for over two months before being asked to leave. The men escaped with $60,000 cash and a gold chain with a pair of gold earrings. The family recognized one of the suspects and called the police, who arrested one suspect, but have not yet been able to tie them to the robbery. The family is traumatized and afraid to leave their home ever since the home invasion. Independence Day is coming up. So it's time to declare independence from breakdowns with Powered Automotive. They have reliable, high-quality truck parts and spares for your truck at amazing prices. Visit them at lot 490 EE Echoes or call or WhatsApp them on telephone number 697-0171. Save big on truck parts at Powered Automotive, the number one heavy-duty truck parts store in Guyana. Tired of waiting on hold, tracking down a delivery driver or carrying cash for your food orders? GT Eat is here to make your life easier. Ghana's first cashless food ordering and delivery app. Choose from Georgetown's top restaurants, pay securely with your card, and get your food delivered right to your doorstep with the convenience of being able to order from your phone and the added feature of tracking your order. GT Eats is the ultimate solution for all your food needs. Download the app on Apple and Android stores and start ordering the easy way today. The body of Lloyd Obermuller has been found after a boat collision in the Cuyuni River while two other passengers are still missing. The incident occurred early this morning and involved Obermuller's 19-foot wooden boat and another 17-foot wooden boat operated by a man named Kreez Boyd. Boyd suffered several injuries to his right leg and minor injuries to his hands and was taken to Venezuela for medical attention because they were closer to Venezuela than they were out of here. Nonetheless, the investigation is ongoing. Also in the interior, 24-year-old miner Reynold John was stabbed to death in Chinese Creek Bakdam Peruni River by a 23-year-old miner 
after an argument during a drinking spree. Oh gosh, another drunken murder. This is a shame. We keep losing too many of our young men to these things. Nonetheless, the victim was pronounced dead at the Baltica Regional Hospital, and the suspect was arrested at another camp. Two lives wasted. Shame. Now for today's web update. Van Oud Offshore and Sub C7 will begin laying subsea pipes for the Gas Energy Project next month. The project involves the construction of 225 kilometers of pipeline from the Lisa Field in Starbrook Lock Offshore Ghana to the natural gas plant in Wales on the West Bank. The pipeline will measure approximately 195 kilometers from the gathering location to the landing location and will transport 50 million standard cubic feet of dry gas per day. Van Oud has applied for a license to store, transport, and distribute fuel from their vessel to their offshore fleet laying the pipes, and has acknowledged the potential risk for an oil spill in offshore bunkering. In other news, ExxonMobil Guyana received approval for its 2023 plan and a certificate for complying with its local content plan for last year. The company spent 180 billion Ghana dollars last year and employed over 5,000 Guyanese workers with more expected as projects come on stream. The company aims to balance business needs with developing Guyanese content and creating a positive impact on the nation. At least that's what they said. And finally, Ray Duck has completed his 202-mile cross-country walk in 12 days to raise awareness for a renegotiation of the Exxon Noble contract. After starting in the quarantine coast, he reached Charity Market in the Pomeroon on Monday to the celebration of supporters in the area. In fact, Dagger says he received support and love from fellow Guyanese throughout his journey, and he intends to return to Burbies to witness firsthand some of the stories of poverty he heard. Dagger says he was inspired by Glenn Law's efforts to fight for a change to the Exxon Noble contract and urged Guyanese to join in the fight for a renegotiation. Robbery season might be over, but the streets are still mean. That's why you need to get security for your home and business with Sheriff Security. Sheriff Security has well-trained guards, armed and unarmed patrol, marine patrol, canine services. They speed leaving our drones. Why? Because your security is their highest priority. You've seen the rest. Now hire the best. Hire Sheriff Security Service today. Now for our uncut news, here's poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in Ghana, the region, the diaspora, and how you fear it based was. Last night I asked, how do you feel about the ambassador, Sarah Ann Lynch, leaving? But before we get to that, I'm proud to announce our latest addition to the Noble Army, Richard Singh, who is supporting us at the reporter level, the highest level of monthly support we've received so far. So thank you, Richard Singh. And also a special thank you to David Griffith, Dion Nascimento, Project Zero, and Dimitri V. I appreciate you all. And if you're watching at home and you'd like to support our movement, just hit the link in the video description. Dimitri V says, I can honestly say, I don't know much that she's done for the nation, positive and negative. Probably the one launch event she held for the elderly. The president has done more in regards to U.S. Ghana relations than she has, in my opinion. Hey, who knows? All I know is that sometimes the most effective diplomats are the ones you don't even realize what they're even doing. And finally, Buffett Wanderer says, it makes no difference from one on to the next. They're all the same. Watchers of the colonizer, keeping an eye on the prize. Indeed, whether it's Trump or Biden, it's all just different flavors of neocolonialism. Now for tonight's question. How do you feel about Jordan's case being thrown out? Do you agree that those were in fact trumped up charges brought against him? Or is there more at play than we're seeing? I want you to think about that question. So us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in our next episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight. And check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Nico Paul Saying, good night, folks.